two or day three, I don't remember anymore, where a part of the mast track came and landed and glued from the mast. Uh, from there, I think we fought uh, very, very hard all the Southern Ocean with, uh, you know, with ratchet straps down to the mast and, and sailing with the mainsail, you know, not in optimal conditions with uh, some buttons with no cars and, and, you know, and not working properly. So today, once we were just passing the Cape Horn, uh, you know, we should not be harder because it was not that win anymore and, and just the third of the mainsail just ripped from side to side and, and now we have no more choice than, you know, drop the main as we have. While it might be bad for Matt Frey, they're only back in the race thanks to their shore crew being on standby at Cape Horn. For more information on that effort, I spoke earlier with team performance manager Neil McDonald. I, th I think it's been a very, very hard leg, not just for our girls and boys, but for everybody. Um, and, you know, I, I think people are going to be pleased that um, they're moving up north into the warmer climes. Um, it's probably felt like a very long two weeks for everyone. I can well imagine, and a long 24 hours rounding Cape Horn as well. Uh, we here in, in Race Control and also fans at home were astonished at all of the resources that you were able to get into place for that uh, quick repair. Can you talk us through the planning that goes into a pit stop like that? The planning for this particular pit stop started a, a year ago in, in San Yenko, which was our base in, in Spain. Um, and Shabby was very keen to make sure we had something in place. Uh, our shore team, logistics team, you know, they've been working on it for, it's a year, literally a year ago. So. Um, we hope we never need to use it, but uh, clearly this time we did. So, um, you know, I think pr preparation is important in this race, and, and that was one of the, the areas we, we put some preparation into. Now, in terms of the uh, the rules, can you talk us through that a little bit? You've got a 12-hour uh, mandatory stop if you if you stop at all. Uh, mm -hmm. And then what, what is it that controls you taking on material or um, outside intervention? The rules are reasonably clear, straightforward. They haven't really changed much over the last few races. Basically, you're allowed outside help once you suspend racing. You're allowed people to come and help work on the boat, work on the masts, work on the sails. What you're not allowed is to put new sails on, for example. You're not allowed to um, replenish your food. Uh, so there are, there's a strict set of rules, um, but they're reasonably straightforward and pretty well understood. So it was pretty impressive to turn around and, and have the two parallel, well, three, four. We saw winches coming off and being serviced. We saw a, a crack at the back of the boom that was being glued up along with uh, a luft leech rip in the mainsail and the original problem, which was the mast track. So an, an impressive effort to, to get all of those things uh, in in one job. Yeah, we were uh, routing at about 75 true wind angle in uh, in about 30 knots of breeze and uh, so I was driving at the time and then uh, there was a big bang and uh, the rig broke just above the first spreader um, yeah went with quite a bang everything all the instruments jumped out the bracket the radar exploded the camera on the front of the rig exploded and uh, yeah and the, the top of the mast was he landed in the water with a stump sticking up uh, since then just to uh, make sure we look after the boat the integrity of the hull, we've had to cut everything away and that's all away safely and uh, I'm glad to say everyone is safe. Everyone is, uh, is healthy, no one got injured in the rig coming down and, and the boat seems to be good. So now we're just getting everything squared away and uh, we're going to start motoring towards Falklands. To lose this rig at this stage to 1600 miles from the finish is uh, yeah, really disappointing. But uh, we've got a great team, we'll bounce back. This is in my bunk. We, uh, Peeled over the wrong way pretty violently, and there was a pretty big, uh, big bang. And uh, immediately in my head, I kind of known what had happened. Um, but we're bombing along in 30 knots, you know, uh, double head reaching next to Dong Fong, and that was one second. And the next second, we weren't. And um, you know, everyone stayed calm, cool, and collected, and we were able to get the thing over the side. That was the diciest part. The thing with this race is it, it it's. Yeah, it's, it's a challenge. The whole thing is a challenge. Whether you're racing the weather or the elements or the setbacks like this, um, I think that just it just tells the story. This race is about is about overcoming the difficulties. Um, we can't really overcome this one now, but we can we can make a for, plan to go forward and and uh, try our hardest to keep keep in the race. The frontal system turned us into the waves and they're massive. 
And clearly we've dropped off one and the rig's not very happy. So we need to go and have a look. A bit gutted at the moment. We have had a brilliant southern ocean look. Everything in one piece. And then 24 hours in the South Atlantic. Great. And now we've uh, just got a rig issue. They, uh, we bounced off a big wave. And the rig was all twisting around. So we've dropped the sails. And now Liz has got the unenviable task of going up there to find out what the problem is. <laughs> Okay, I found part of the problem. Spreader to starboard side. The spreader route looks like it's threaded. I found the problem! Just trying to bounce the mast with uh, Bombi at the front and Liz at the top. Like this, Liz can try to screw again the, the spreader in the mast. They are trying to fix it, but it's not uh, it's not easy actually. I'm smiling because we just had a call at the very end of the day to say that we thought we were going to be stuck on three reefs in a J3, so just plodding along but they've okayed us to go with one reef and a J1 and a fractional but no masthead sails at the moment but that is a much bigger sail plan changes all our options massively so it's good news and we're going to get sailing again Sailed in here in a little 28 foot sloop and back in 19, was it, say 1965, to take up the post of uh, the government surgeon here. And, and uh, just for two years before getting back to London, and never left. And, and sailed all my life. Well, make me down a pallet on your floor. I'm from Tortola originally, I grew up here. Uh, everybody, just about everybody lives here or has lived here in the past. I grew up sailing the Spare God with my dad actually. Went from when I was a little, little kid, he'd stick me on the transom in a little yellow floaty belt. <laughs> and uh, in the bear boat class, he was uh, very competitive along with Presley King. So that's how I started out here. And then there was a little bit of a gap of a few years while I was away at school. And now I'm fortunate enough to come back on, uh, wasn't a question in my mind actually. I've always wanted to come back and race this regatta in the uh, in the racing classes and I've certainly got what I've hoped for. It's, it's been uh, thrilling to say the least. Now let's go below and hard into the wind. All right, sail fast, straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line. Um, I'm with uh, Sonoma, which is a Bristol uh, 411, uh, 1986. Um, this is my first experience sailing period. Uh, my first sailing excursion was uh, Tuesday of this week, which was just three days ago. Um, and I'm wicked excited and ready to get on with uh, today's event. At the time being, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I love sports um, and I look forward to uh, maybe taking some private sailing lessons to learn more about just sailing on my own. And I always like to try something new, try something different. Um, you can never learn too much. I've actually done all the BVI Spring Engages except perhaps one, you know, this is my home. Uh, most of the time I live here. I just love to sail and I love to race. So this time I thought, still, I can't miss coming out, so I chartered this boat. Crews from Pat Bailey from St. Thomas, who's sailed with me through many boats. And we have Presley King, who's well known around these parts. He's the original from Equi, but he's lived here most of his life. And he's one of the people who knows the the wind and the water better than anybody. I understood that the island was hit um, with the hurricane. I didn't know to what extent until I actually got here and saw uh, the tremendous devastation. But I'm uh, proud to be here and be able to support the locals and getting their island back up and, and running and fully functioning. No, I, I was I was here actually. I, uh, fortunately, the boats weren't here. 
uh, but I, w I was here. My mother has still has her house here, so I came down to help her out. Expecting to only be here for a few days, you know, flying a couple days before. The usual hurricane story, a little bit of cleanup afterwards, a couple of days, but I ended up being stuck here for nearly a month because, you know, I couldn't get out. And there was plenty to be done, you know. I wasn't, I wouldn't say I was stuck. But yeah, it was, it was quite a wild ride. I hope to never experience it again. Having an event like this, come back to the BVI so quickly, you know, after, you know, seeing this place six months ago, the first time I got out of my neighborhood and drove down to Nanny Keys, you know, especially just the, the boats piled like a, you know, like a child's stack of Lego, just all bunched together in a pile. It was like nothing I've ever seen. And uh, so to have everybody come back with so much enthusiasm, you know, in such, such good numbers considering, you know, considering how many boats were left to sail, uh, to see this many boats come back and race at the Spirigata is really, really nice to see. And, you know, sailors are a big supporter of the environment and cleaning up but because they rely on the environment, the beautiful ocean and the breeze to do what we love to do. And uh, so it's good to, good to see everybody here supporting and doing cleanup, beach cleanups and, um, and here spending money to help the economy recover. There's still many, many people living in shelters, you know, that are homeless. And, you know, on the one hand, yeah, in a bigger country, it, well, there will be a lot more money involved in the recovery. It's a lot harder to come by the funds down here. We just have a smaller economy. But on the other hand, it's a smaller community. So you look at even just the bigger islands like Puerto Rico, they have so much more on their plate to, to uh, rebuild. Whereas a lot of people know each other a lot more here. And, and you notice that the smaller the island, the faster it recovered then really it's going to be probably 10 years before we see the end of the effects of Irma, you know. It's, we're off on the right foot, uh, everybody's been working incredibly hard, I mean, especially right off the bat, you know, everybody was out together, neighbor, all whole neighborhoods who no, normally talk to each other, you know, everybody was chatting and friendly and, and helping each other out in any way they could. Uh, so I think being a small community, I think actually helps the recovery process more than being a bigger community, big cities where people, nobody knows each other, nobody's willing to really step in to help each other as much. We don't have the funds, but we've got the people and the, uh, and the attitudes. Okay, nice and slow now, let's power up and up to speed. So, it was pretty exciting going through the hurricane. I had wasn't to have been away for the summer. I, I had to come back for various reasons uh, at the end of August, and of course it was in my house when, when the hurricane hit. And we got the roof back on fairly quickly and all the other things, and I'm still working on the house. But, uh, uh, there's, there are, we've got a long way to go, but it's amazing how much recovery there is. It's just the, the big question to me is, how do we get rid of all these dead boats, these fiberglass boats? I've always been a, an old wooden boat man. I mean, my last boat was wood, the last few boats have been wood. And uh, at least wooden boats, you know, it either rots away or you can burn it, but what can you do with fiberglass boats? And we've got so many and littered around the place, and that's going to be one of the major um, problems, how to get rid of all this trash. The thing about the sailors is they just need the water. You know, they don't need all the land stuff. I mean, you know, I mean, the good sailors enjoy the beauty of the islands. And so this is actually, for sailors, this is the best time ever. Because when I came, the first year I came in my little 28 foot sloop, I was the only yacht in the BVI. And, you know, that's a long time ago. Uh, and, you know, it was just perfect sailing around. Right now, it's the best time to come. And so I think a lot of the sailors, real sailors, have come down for that reason. The class rule is important because it's really the blueprint uh, by which all teams design their yachts. So we put out the video originally saying roughly what the boat's going to look like, but the class rule really uh, gives all of the details and structure around that, um, that concept of the boat. So teams can now go forward and put their competitive hats on and design a boat as fast as possible, but within a defined set of constraints. We want, of course, equal competition or close competition and therefore we, the boats have to be similar 
and uh, the rules must be written such that there are no big loopholes and uh, that's yeah it's very important to to ensure a good competition I think it's, it's a pretty interesting rule because uh, there isn't one specific area. Uh, I think there's quite a few areas from the, the hull shape, uh, which is going to be important in this type of boat because takeoff is important. Uh, the foils, obviously. There's aerodynamics, uh, hydrodynamics, uh, control systems, electronics, hydraulics. Many things are involved and um, all these components together to ensure that it works all together. That's, that is quite challenging and that's quite exciting. And I hope we we came up with a, with a good package. The guys have worked pretty closely with the designers uh, in Luna Rasa and I think together we've, we've got a really, really strong role.
it has been a, a really tough leg, I think, especially emotional, uh, of course, with, uh, with the loss of John. Uh, that sits uh, really, really deep, and I think, especially as being a skipper, you're just feeling all that responsibility for your crew members and the family members at home. But as well, it has been so windy, and uh, but I think just like a sport, if uh, I think we can be really, really happy because all the points were for grab at that stake, we won, and that, uh, now all of a sudden the scoreboard looks uh, a little bit more in our favour. Yeah, well, I think um, you know we did an amazing job through the Southern Ocean, and you know, KP got us in some pretty good spots and pushed the boat pretty hard, but. Yeah, then it just seemed to keep being uh, compression after compression and Don Feng would just get through them and we'd never be able to get away. So uh, we always knew it was going to be uh, super tight when we hit the light air here and you know, to be able to hold on and take the win, um, you know, it was pretty satisfying. A very tough leg, uh, probably one of the toughest legs of the Volvo Ocean Race. And and uh, it has been a pit fight and a pit match racing in the south uh, with many, many jibes uh, because of the ice limit. Uh, full down wind in 35, 40 knots average speed. So it was really, really tough uh, leg and uh, also a dramatic one with uh, John Fisher who has disappeared. Of course, uh, we think about it, but when you are in the south, you think also about you and you are scared when you hear about that because you know it, it may happen. It, and, uh, but at the end, uh, for us, very positive. Uh... No, it's definitely, uh, you know, great to finally take a win as a, as a team or even just a good result. And it feels like we've sailed some of the other leagues pretty well and this, uh, things didn't quite go away, but you know, to be able to put it all together this time and uh, come away with a win and probably the, the league with the most points on offer in the whole race is uh, you know, super pleasing for us as a group, but obviously uh, you know, some pretty mixed emotions halfway through with uh, you know, everything that was going on behind us with um, you know, what happened with Fish and... Uh, Investors losing their masks and uh, you know, plenty of chaos going on. Now we're um, really glad to be back on trial right now.